anti-Semitic hate has reached record levels, according to a Jewish charity. More than 4,000 anti-Semitic incidents were recorded in the UK in 2023. This, uh, according to the Community Security Trust. This is a report. We're going to speak to the person who wrote that later. They say this has just absolutely magnified since those October the 7th Hamas attacks. Well, joining us now for more is Rabbi Dr. Jonathan Romain, who's the director no, of no, Maidenhead no, no. Syn Synagogue. No, sorry, not your fault. Guys, th th this is our guest from the last hour, so that's that's wrong, that. Sorry. Well, it, it, he is here. He is here. Oh, I'm He's down the line. That, that's OK. But it is confusing and because... Also, and yeah, also, Dal Babu, a former Met Police Chief Superintendent, is here. Jonathan, can we start with, with you? Just to explain to us, this report, Jeremy's just laid it out there, says uh, there's been a significant increase um, since the 7th of October. Um, what can you tell us? Uh, well, it's deeply upsetting, um, and it's uh, on all sorts of levels, and we've seen it um, uh, certainly online <clears throat> with a lot of abuse. We've seen it on university campuses uh, with students, Jewish students, um, being uh, vilified. Uh, we've seen it the other day in the, a theatre, uh, the Soho Theatre in London, uh, with somebody who didn't want to stand up for the Palestinian flag, uh, not only being booed, but hounded out of the theatre. Uh, and this is really quite extraordinary um, and, and, and just so un-British and so unfair. Uh, and it's really a direct result of what's happening in Israel. Um, and yes, of course, there are awful things happening in Israel and they're suffering on both sides. What that's got to do with British Jews, absolutely nothing. It's like, you know, if, if the... Um, but like the, whoever killed the people in Kansas City was blue-eyed, blaming someone blue-eyed here in England. Well, it's as daft and as ridiculous as that, but unfortunately it is related, because what happens in Israel, or uh, the Middle East, is, is often uh, seen that uh, the British Jews are somehow responsible. Uh, we're not British citizens. It, it, you know, it, it seems almost uh, ridiculous for me to have to explain that British Jews are not responsible for what happens in, in Israel, and yet British Jews are, are often uh, seen as responsible. Um, um, but I have to say, of course, this is not universal. These incidents are awful. Uh, but there's also a lot of very good work and relations going on. And in fact, immediately after October the 7th, when the Hamas attacks took place, um, I got together with the local vicar, local imam, and we said a prayer for peace. It didn't change the world, but it gave a very clear signal to our own congregations here in the UK that whatever's happening over in the Middle East, we are not going to import here. And it also emphasised that what's going on in the Middle least is a political problem, it's not a religious problem, and therefore there is absolutely no reason why Jews, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, everybody else cannot go to get on uh, together here as well. Tell us, that's sort of the, the wider political context that is then having very real impacts on people in Britain. We're seeing reports of violent anti-Semitic assaults, um, damage and desecration of Jewish property. I mean, what have you seen, people that you know? Um, well, uh, all of the above, uh, everything you said, unfortunately, is true. Um, I personally, and the, curiously enough, haven't seen it on an everyday basis because where I live in Maidenhead has actually been an oasis of, um, of calm. And that's not an accent. It's because of the really good interfaith relations we've established in the last 30, 40 years. But that's not the story elsewhere in Britain. And certainly there are places in London, in Manchester, where it's really very upsetting, where Jewish children particularly are frightened to go to school uh, if they go to a Jewish day school because they're going to be um, uh, shouted at or bullied on the bus uh, or because there's people outside the schools um, uh, holding placards or uh, screaming abuse. Again, uh, people taking out on Jewish children in Britain uh, for what's happening over uh, uh, the other side of the can Mediterranean. I, can I cut to the chase? Really glad to have you on. Um, I, I asked a question last hour and I'd love to ask it of you. And I will say again, because no doubt certain people will go, that's not the right thing to say. I think any form of racism is abhorrent. I understand what you're saying about what's happening in terms of the wider conflict, and nobody wants to see what's happening in, in uh, Gaza right now. We are talking about anti-Semitic crime on the streets of the United Kingdom amongst and for and against Jewish people. What I don't understand, my friend, is this. Why is there not the level of abhorrence about anti-Jewish sentiment as there is against anti well racism against other races colors and creeds i've never understood that maybe i'm missing the point but why are jews an easier target why are they not looked upon in the same way or those sorts of crimes or hatred or whatever that's what i've never got can you try and explain that to me and help me out 
Uh, well, unfortunately, you're spot on, and it is inexplicable, inexplicable because it's totally illogical. I mean, you are right. Anti-Semitism is a form of racism. In fact, it is racism. It happens to be racism against people of faith rather than people of colour. Um, uh, and it is, you know, a anybody who would say I'm against racism uh, should not be anti-Semitic. Uh, because the two are absolutely the same. Unfortunately, in the world we live in, somehow it's okay uh, to be totally PC about gender, um, race, uh, color, whatever, but also you can be anti-Semitic. It's, it's wrong, it's ridiculous, it shouldn't happen. And, and the point you make, anti-Semitism is racism, it's just as abhorrent and should not be allowed. Um, and, and yet somehow it seems to slip through the net um, and, and you seem to be a target in a way that um, anybody else uh, would, would, would not, would, it would it be called out as, as totally wrong. It's a mystery to us, frankly, and as for the victims of it, we really don't understand why, and why people who are otherwise very liberal, very woke, um, mm. uh, very oh. PC, it happens and they find themselves... They're very blinkered. I don't see any of the PC world who quite rightly, and I'll say this, I don't see any of the people who are quite rightly underlined saying that the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is appalling, what's happening out there. I don't see any of those people jumping up and down saying what's happening to British Jews in this country is wrong. That's just a personal opinion. We have it. But I want to ask you one further question, if I can, before we bring Dal in. There is a condemnation, an increasing condemnation across the world from, from America, from Cameron. This morning we hear Australia, New Zealand and other countries saying, Netanyahu, this is, this is appalling. There's a, a million displaced Palestinians in Gaza. They've gone south. Now you're going to bomb there. Can you give me your take on this? Anti-Semitism one side, I accept that. What's your view on what's going on out there, Jonathan? Well, you're quite right to say they are one side and the other side. They are totally unrelated. And um, there are a lot of Jews who are also equally appalled by what's happening in Gaza. I mean, Palestinian suffering is human suffering is equally unacceptable. And, and it's not just me. There are other rabbis, other Jews. Uh, in fact, Israelis themselves. And remember Netanyahu's government was fiercely opposed by 50 percent of the Israeli electorate uh, when he uh, at the time. Um, Israel is not a united uh, nation when they're united against Hamas, united against what happened against on October the 7th. But there are a lot of Jews, a lot of Israelis who are really very, very upset about what's happening in Gaza. We don't think it's right. We don't think it's a long term solution. And we want to find a more diplomatic uh, way forward. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, and but and here's the important point. It's quite legitimate to be against the policies of the Israeli government, to be against um, what Netanyahu is doing. And yet, um, you can still support the state of Israel, support Jewish people, and certainly not be anti-Semitic or, or attack Jews here in Britain. Thank you. Of course. Really uh, listening well to said. that is uh, Dal Babu, former Met Chief Superintendent. Dal, Good um, why is it that we have an incident like on the 7th of October, and then, particularly for the Jewish community, they are then more at risk of things like damage to their property, mm. violent assault? Yeah, I mean, it's shocking, and, and I think there's not a single word I would disagree with what jo uh, Dr. Jonathan uh, has just said. said yeah. uh, I think uh, we, meet, we need to very, very, be very, very clear. We don't need to conflate being Jewish with the Israel state. Uh, and I think lots of people will be concerned about what Israel are doing in Gaza, but that's very, very different from treating somebody who's Jewish and holding them responsible. So I think we need to be very, very clear. And anti-Semitism is racism. You know, we should be very, very clear. Why do you think, Dale, and, and I'm really glad you said that, and I, it's one of those subjects, we were talking about it yesterday, weren't we, Rosie? Well, we can't talk about that. Why do you think that anti-Semitism, which you accept is racism, Jonathan does, all of us do, is not, I don't know the right way, Dale, to put this, is not on the same level, does not upset those who apparently get upset quite rightly by those things. For all the people who absolutely understand that racism is wrong. Why do the PC parades seemingly not think that anti-Semitism is equally abhorrent? I don't get it. I mean, I don't know the reason, but I think what happens is people conflate Israel yeah. with uh, ju ju Judaism. And I think that uh, I've, I've got friends uh, who, are, who had children in Israel who were very, very worried about what was happening uh, on October the 7th. They didn't know, couldn't get hold of their uh, children um, so, and extremely worried. Um, so I, I think we need to understand that there are many, many Jewish people who are equally concerned as, as Muslim people, as uh, Christian people, about what's happening in Gaza. 
uh, what, what we do have is almost without exception. In fact, there are no exceptions. Whenever there's a, a conflict in the Middle East, we have a rise in anti-Semitism. Actually, we also have a rise in anti-Muslim crime mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. so, so what we need to be doing is ensure that people understand there is a clear distinction between Israel and the wider Jewish community, and the wider Jewish community, some will support Israel, many people won't, many of my, my friends won't support them. You said we need to, well, I think we know there's a, a clear distinction. How do you reassure the Jewish community from a policing perspective, mm -hmm. which is obviously why you're here, and that they will be uh, looked after and, and not feel scared? Things like going to school or, you know, not getting abused on the, on the bus. We've heard school children having awful situations, or not having their businesses, you know, graffitied or having thrown paint all, all, all over them. Um, you're dealing with the consequences, but how do we deal with the cause? Well, I think what's happened is that there's been across the whole of the country, and I think this is where the, the government have stepped forward in terms of Jewish uh, buildings, so synagogues, uh, Jewish schools. They are working with local authorities and uh, other partners to ensure that there are additional uh, patrols uh, to, to protect those children. So there's a lot, it's a very, very comprehensive. Certainly when I was in the police, we were, whenever there was a conflict, we knew that there would be tension. And it, just listening to the rabbi there, it's very, very clear the, the interfaith work that goes on mm. is very, that very strong. That was good to hear. Uh, and, and, and I think that interfaith work happens all the time across lots of different areas. And I think we, and, and the police have a valuable role to play in facilitating that working mm. with the different communities. And I think, um, I think what the rabbi said there was that we have very, very good interfaith relationships. If you don't have those, uh, then, then sometimes that whole situation can be much worse. Quick so, question before you go. Could the police be stronger on anti-Semitism in, in the communities? Well, Jeremy, we've had this conversation many Hello. times. There's been a massive reduction in policing. A quarter of all the police have less than five years' experience. If we had more police, would it make a difference? I think the police would be able to do things uh, more effectively if there was okay. more resources. I know resources are a very, very easy subject to bring up, but it's the inexperience no. coupled with the lack of resources. Thank you, Dal. Thank oh, you very thank much you indeed, so Jonathan. Much.